<laughs> like a copy of God's Word, Bible, entire New Testament, uh, offered to you uh, free of charge without <clears throat> any cost or any obligation to you. If you would like to have one, then please feel free to come and ask for one. It's uh, God's Word without which nobody can be. There you go, sir. You. You're welcome, sir. It is... Uh, you're a believer, sir? Hey. You're a believer? Yes. Yes? Good. Well, have a read, sir. Word of God uh, brings life, light, and liberty to the soul. You agree? Yes. Jesus, I mean. Yes. Yeah? The way, the truth, and the life. That's it. Enjoy, sir. Have a good day. Yeah? Thank you. Have a good day. So, oh, I see. Right. Okay. Very good, sir. So, it's as simple, you see, you have but to receive the Word of God. And, of course, it's only in receiving the living Word of God, that's Jesus himself, that a person comes to a knowledge of God's salvation, His love, His mercy, His grace and kindness. It's of that, you see, that we are uh, here to um, explain somewhat to you today that um, you too might come to know eternal life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we offer God's Word to you, His written Word. Uh, take, receive, and uh, even, even if you're not a Christian, uh, can I suggest you, you read the Bible because um, it will... Um, bless you, you know, you read the Bible and obey what it says, you will benefit from it, even if you're not a Christian. And of course, in reading it, well, who knows, maybe you'll come to be one, because the Bible says that um, it's by the hearing of God's Word, and sometimes by the reading of God's Word, that a person comes to faith. Uh, to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God to you here in um, Leicester City this afternoon, word of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible for the one, the person, that is, who believes. He who believes. The thing is, you see, friends, that uh, Jesus, in speaking these words, he speaks to um, a man who is greatly troubled. He has a son who is full of evil. And of course, well, that's pretty much common today, isn't it? In our own society, not, uh, not uncommon. I mean, to have children who, you know, don't turn out the way that uh, you would wish them to do. And of course, um, some turn to extreme evil. Well, this man coming to Jesus, you see... Uh, he, um, well, he's troubled with uh, this son who's possessed with evil, and he's asking Jesus to help him. He says, if you can do anything to help us, please, you know, help. And Jesus, he kind of like, you know, if you like, he, he kind of throws the question back at him. He's kind of like saying, you know, what, what do you mean? What do you mean can I help? That's not the question. The question is, can you believe? And of course, in giving the man the answer to his, uh, his problem, which of course is severe, well, you know, Jesus, he gives, uh, he gives to us, you and I both, he gives us the answer to all the common sufferings of humanity. Because you see, they all come from the same place. Whatever the trouble might be, war, starvation, violence, drug culture, sexual immorality, all the troubles, you see, uh, that come to humanity, yes, even death itself, you know, all the sufferings that come to humanity, they all come out of the one, the same pot. They come out of that problem that's common to every single one of us, one common denominator that binds us all together as human beings, and that, of course, is the fact of sin. 
and of course the original sin the sin of our first parents yours and mine Adam and Eve they brought sin into the world and death by sin the Bible tells us that's where death came from that's where sin came from and so now it's common to every one of us because it's passed on through every generation so you see you trace the trouble death bereavement sickness pain war strife you know whatever the suffering might be the cause is always the same if you trace it back to its roots honestly i mean sincerely it will take you to the same place every time it will take you to adam's sin and there's only one answer to adam's sin passed on to you and i and that of course is faith faith you see towards jesus christ the son of god he's the antidote to the poison he's the answer you see he's the remedy for all the sufferings of humankind caused by that one sin that brought all sin and all death into the world one answer friends if you can believe says jesus thou canst believe all things are possible even your salvation possible if that is you can believe but of course well you might ask the question what is it what is it that jesus means by believing you know a lot of people believe in a lot of stuff some people tell you that you know you well you need to believe in yourself you got a bit more self-belief you know that'll help you i'm sure it will i'm sure maybe get you a better job you know maybe get you on in the world maybe get you up the ladder a bit further if you can just believe in yourself but that won't bring you to god that won't reconcile you to god that won't overcome the factor of sin do a lot for you self-confidence i guess but me think you know friends it's uh it's maybe self-confidence you know confidence over much confidence in ourselves that gets us into a, a whole lot you know a whole mess of trouble more than ever before now that's not what jesus means he means believing in him he means you know if you can believe if you can believe all things are possible to the person the one who believes who believes that is that jesus that the son of god that christ and christ alone can do the business save you from that sin factor that is the cause of the effects you know common to us all the common sufferings of humanity jesus the son of god he and he alone and nobody else because you live in a day and generation in dear old england you know when you're told well from the cradle to the grave most of you i guess you know it don't matter what you believe don't matter who you believe in you know they, they, they all all roads lead to the one god anyhow you know it doesn't matter what the religion what faith you know you're in a multi-culture society and it don't matter you know no matter what you believe because you know the the the, the road the path will take you you know to the only uh, the one god that there is well you see that's not what the bible says that's not what the bible teaches that's not what jesus teaches he says i am the way the truth and the life and he says no one comes to the father only by me you see not through any road not through any religion one way you see then again the bible says neither uh, neither is there anyone else you know who can bring salvation to you by which you can be saved no other person under heaven under the whole canopy of heaven says god by which a person can be saved only through the name jesus the son of god 
So believe in what Jesus says, if you can, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes, believes that is in Jesus, and that he's able to deal with your sin problem. And of course he is, because that's what he came for. That's why he was born into this world, born of a woman, born of a virgin, born into this world and lived in love and died and rose again from the dead, shed his precious blood, his atoning blood, his sin atoning blood. You see, he alone paid the price for sin. He alone made the sacrifice. He alone offers to God, his Father, the blood sacrifice the only blood sacrifice that is acceptable to God. So see, friends, you can't come no other way. It don't work no other way. I might say, I, I, I got my own way, thank you very much. I guess, I know, I think, uh, maybe. You know, I hear people telling me, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, funerals today, like, you know, the, the favorite... The favorite song that people like to have sung at their funerals, you know, is I did it my way, Sinatra's old uh, piece of nonsense, I did it my way. Well, friends, you can do it your way, but it won't work. It won't bring you to God. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I will not shut up. Cannot shut up. This is good news. This is salvation for those who come through Jesus and Jesus alone. No other way by which you can come. If you can, says Jesus, all things, everything is possible. Your salvation from sin and its consequences, the suffering that it brings to your life, into your situations, your own personal life, your own family. Friends, Jesus, he alone is the way. There is no other way. Not your way, not man's way. Man devises all kinds of ways, you know, by which he thinks. He thinks he's pleasing God. All manner of religion, religious practices, the world's full of them. Idolatrous religions, what the Bible calls it. But it don't bring you to God, friends, unless it's Bible's way, unless it's God's way, unless it's the way that God himself has revealed in his word, the Bible. There's no other God but Jesus Christ. He alone is God. There's no other but Him. He is the true and living God. The God that you know exists. The God, whom God, the, the God who has revealed Himself to you. He's made it plain to you, shown it to you, and you clearly understand that He is, that God is. I don't mean a God. I mean the God. I mean Jesus Christ who came into the world, born of a woman, born under the law, obeyed the law perfectly, and went to the cross and died, shed his blood that you might be washed and made clean, and that you might be reconciled to God. This is what Jesus means when he says, if you can, everything is possible to the one who believes. Believes, that is, that Jesus and he alone is the way back to God, the way to be reconciled to God. But believe in two, of course, believe in that Jesus is able, and he is able, I mean, I mean, read the Bible for yourself. We invite you, you know, take a copy of God's Word home with you and read for yourself and see what the, the almighty power of King Jesus, you know, he... He is the Lord, and the Lord is King. And He rules the universe, controls it all, brought it all into being. You know, this nonsense of evolution. Come on, friends, you know it's not true. You know it's a bag of lies. You know, friends, you know, it's a whole bag of deceit that's been handed to you by the devil to blind you more and keep you from God, from His love, His grace, His healing, and His salvation. And you know it's not true. Jesus Christ created everything. He spoke the universe into being. He controls it. He sustains it. He sustains your life. Your very next breath is in the palm of his hand. Now, friends, here's the truth. Jesus Christ is able. I mean, he created a universe. He spoke a universe into being. 
So, I mean, what are your problems? What are your sufferings? What are your sin? You know, to him, he has only, he has only but to speak the word and it's gone. The miraculous, supernatural power of King Jesus, the Lord, able to save to the uttermost all those who draw near, draw near to God through him. So I see, friends, uh, he's able, and of course you read the Bible, you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you see some of the things that Jesus did. I mean, how, how he healed the sick, you know, people with leprous diseases, absolutely hopeless and powerless, you know, to, to help themselves in any which way at all. And Jesus touches and heals them, you know. He gives eyesight to the blind, you know, even his enemies. Even those who had him crucified, they testified, they said, no man ever opened the eyes of the blind, but this man did. Jesus did. That was the testimony of his enemies, the crucifiers. So I see, friends, he's able. If you can believe, says Jesus, if you can believe everything is possible, the end to the sufferings caused by your sin and your sin, to deal with the sin, to deal with the root, to deal with the cause, not just the effects, to bring salvation to you. If you can believe that is, everything is possible to the one who believes. You go on reading through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read and see for yourself, friends. See how the Jesus rose, you know, raised people from the dead, you know, rose himself from the dead by his own mighty, mighty power, King Jesus. He's able, he's able to do all these things. I mean, what are your, your tiny, minuscule problems, you know, in the light of all these things? He has but to speak the word and salvation is yours. But here's the question, can you believe? Can you believe? If you can, says Jesus, everything is possible, even your salvation, if you can believe. Faith, you see, in the Son of God deals with the cause, the sin problem, the sin factor. It's common to us all. But Jesus alone, and he is able, and I tell you, willing, willing. That, that, that's what he means when he says, if you can believe. Can you believe that Jesus is willing? He said, well, how do you know that he's willing? Well, because the Bible says Christ Jesus came into the world for this purpose, this reason, uh, to rescue, to save sinners. You know, he came, he lived, he loved, he died, he rose again from the dead. Does that not suppose to you, to your mind, a willingness on his part to save? I mean, he didn't come for nothing, you know? And of course, he, he stretched his arms out on the cross. Some people, they ask the question, they say, was it the nails that held Jesus to the cross? No, it wasn't. It was his love for sinners such as you and I that we might be saved. You see, friends, his coming, his living, his dying, his rising from the dead, his reigning from heaven now, friends, declares to the world, to all the world, as we seek here to do today, why he told his disciples, his followers, in every day and every age, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because the gospel is the means and the only means of salvation. And what is the means? What is, what is the gospel, I mean? Ah, huh? Jesus. Jesus, a person, not a religion. Jesus, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus, you see, he did something about the cause of all the suffering in the world. The cause is sin. Jesus deals with the sin factor through his death and resurrection. That's what he did. He died. And who did he die for? He died for the ungodly, the Bible says. Who are the ungodly? Those who are contrary to God, 
in their nature and in their practice. Sinners to a man, to a woman by nature, and sinners to a man, to a woman by practice. All of us sinners, for all who sinned and come short of the glory of God. Friends, ah, oh, dear friends, Jesus. Jesus throws out the lifeline to you. The lifeline, the gospel, salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came for this reason and this purpose and says to you, if you can, everything is possible to the one that is who can believe. But it takes faith, friends. Here's the thing. Can you believe? Or you can be religious. You can do that yourself. You don't need my help for that. You just go to the mosque, the synagogue, the temple. You know, just be religious. Anybody can do that. But friends, you can't be saved by yourself. You can't be saved by your own power. You can't do that yourself. The cross of Jesus declares two things very clearly. It declares, number one, all men, all men to be sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it declares the truth, friends, that no man, no woman can save him or herself. Only by the cross, only through the blood atonement of Jesus Christ, only through the blood sacrifice that he has himself made, can you be forgiven, washed, and made right, fit, and ready for heaven. But here's the rub, friends. Here's the things. If you don't believe, if you reject and continue to reject, well, there's nothing left for you but the fearful looking for of judgment. God has given you one out. One out, friends. And if you don't take it, you say, no, I got my own religion, thank you. You know, it matters not, friends, where you come from. The Far East, the Near East, the West, the Near West, the North, the South. Doesn't matter where you go the world over. All men are sinners and all men need my gospel, need the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He alone can save. Not a matter of being religious. Religion will not save you. Only the Son of God. If you can, if you can, Everything is possible for the one who believes, but for the one who does not believe, will not believe, refuses, rejects the gospel. Friends, there's nothing left. Nothing left but the fearful looking for of judgment. Our friends, believe, only believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So then maybe perhaps you would ask the question, maybe you say, well, why is it? What is it that makes faith, you know, believing so difficult? Why don't more people believe if that's the case? Well, the problem is, you see, our natures, we're born into this world with a bias, you see, a bias away from God and a bias towards sin. You know, we are freighted, we're weighed, you know, just on the one side. We're born with sinful natures, you see. And those natures are anti-God, you see. That's why Jesus says a man must be born again. The nature must be changed. That's why I say to you, it takes more than religion. You've got to be born again. You've got to be made a new creature in Jesus Christ. God has to take the heart of stone out of you, the heart that hates God, and give you a new heart a heart of flesh. You've got to be circumcised in the heart. Because you see, friends, you're one of two things. You're, you're either a natural-born God-hater or a supernaturally reborn God-lover. You must, Jesus says, you must be born again. That bias, you see, that hatred for God, that hatred for His Word, that hatred for holiness, that hatred for everything and anything concerning God has to be taken out of you. God bless you, my dear. Well, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Have a nice day, ma'am. 
So they see, friends, it says, you know, it's like I say, it's more than being religious. It's a heart issue. The heart has to be changed. You want to make, you want good fruit from the tree, then you've got to make the tree good. You want to get good practice out of the man, the woman, then you've got to make the man, the woman's nature good. But here's the thing, God puts the question to you. How can you, who are accustomed to doing evil, how can you possibly do good? And of course the answer to the question is, well, that's impossible. Because there's none good, says God, not even one. Jesus says only God is good. You're not good, I'm not good. Or you might call yourself a good person, but God says you're not. None of us are. Only God is good. Friends, you see, that evil, that bias towards sin, towards wickedness, here's the thing, friends, you see, you, you love your sin. And, and God says that's why you won't come to the light. That's why you won't come to the light of the world, because you love your sin. You love the darkness. And you won't come to the light. Darkness is sin. So you see, friends, there has to be a change. And it's a change that you can't make. Only God can make. Supernaturally. Reborn of God's Spirit. Made a new person altogether. But this is the Gospel, friends. And it's through the Gospel, it's through the proclamation of the Gospel, the, thing, the very thing that I'm doing here amongst you this afternoon, that men and women are caused by God to be born again through the hearing of the gospel, through the preaching of God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's one problem. Then, of course, you know, um, some people, well, you know, they think, they think themselves to be good people. Yeah, 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 but, you know, not, not everybody believes in Jesus, they say. But some people are good, you know. What about, what about the person, you know, in the, the darkest jungle, who never heard any of this stuff, never seen a church, never heard about religion. You know, he sits up in a tree somewhere, you know, in the darkest jungles of Amazon. And he's a good person, you know. How can God possibly judge such a person as that? Friends, friends, sin, the sin factor, original sin that comes to every single one of us, that's passed on through the generations so that God can declare all men to be sinners. Those who have never heard the gospel, those who have never heard of religion, Matters not, friends, the world over, wherever you go, you find men and women in sin. But friends, not good. Not good because there is none good. And a person God declares can only be made right with God, justified before God, not by your works, not by your doing, not by anything that you do, Simply and only, only through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the God-ordained way. That's the God-ordained means. If you can believe, says Jesus, everything is possible to the one, the one who believes in Jesus. That is faith alone, you see. Grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The Bible alone's message, friends, declaration, the Reformation war cry, the rediscovery by Martin Luther 500 years ago this year. The man is justified not by works, not by religion, but by faith, faith in Jesus Christ. If you can believe, all things are possible to the one who believes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. God's testimony, God's record, you see it's not true. You call God a liar. Friends, it's the truth and it's only the truth that will set you free.
uh, permit me to give you some help along the pathway to faith. Let me, let me impart to you a copy of God's Word, if I may. Read for yourself to see that these things are so. But let me remind you, friends, let me tell you that the message that I declare to you is not of human origin. My friend didn't uh, dream it up. I didn't. We didn't dream it up together. The church didn't devise this message. Oh, my friends, there's far too much wisdom. There's far too much power in this for any human being to devise it. Not even the apostles, not even the prophets of long ago devised this message. It's a revelation from God. It came from heaven. A divine revelation of salvation through the Son of God. You see, only by revelation, only by revelation can we know anything. That's why I tell you that evolution is a lie. Because, friends, you could not do your evolution. You could not do your scientific. You could not do your philosophy. You could not do anything. You could not even have a meaningful thought unless God had revealed knowledge to us. Friends, knowledge has been revealed to us, and so therefore we are able to do science. We're able to do wonderful things that we do. All the technology that you enjoy because God in the first instance revealed knowledge to us. The beginning. Knowledge of God, friends. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of wisdom. So the message, friends, is God's plan. It's God's message, God's revelation of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the salvation is to be found in Him. So if you can believe, if you can believe everything is possible, even your salvation to the one who believes. And of course, you got the testimony of the Bible, Holy Scripture, the Word of God, friends, written down and given to you in your own language. It's the message you see of the Bible, and the Bible which is faultless, utterly and absolutely faultless. Every word of it breathed out by God, and so therefore trustworthy to the utmost. And friends, if you take heed to the Word of God, read the Word of God for yourself, meditate upon it, but oh, believe it, believe it, friends, because there's only faith, you see. Little good reading the Word of God. Little good learning the Word of God. People can hear the Word of God. It can be declared to them. People can sit in churches all their lives long listening to the Word of God. But until you believe, until you believe, friends, no prophet, none whatsoever, you must believe. If you can believe, says Jesus, everything is possible to the one who believes. You got the testimony of other Christians. My buddy here with me today, he'll testify to you of the grace of God that came to him. I think God did for him what he couldn't do himself. I don't know about you, but listen up. I tell you what, I throw out a challenge to you. Huh? Next time we're here, you bring me 12 atheists. 12 atheists who could stand here and testify of how atheism, godlessness, has changed their lives for the better. Repent and believe the gospel, the both of you. Repent and believe the gospel. So I see, friends, I challenge you, huh? You bring me a dozen atheists stand here and testify how God, how, how their atheism has changed their lives, you know, made them better, made them nice, made them good, kind people. Why don't you repent and believe the gospel, madam? Well, you got the breath of life in you. You're going to die very soon. You're an old lady. No, sir, you shut up. You're going to die soon, ma'am. 
You're going to cock your toes up. You're going to out of this world. Feet first. And you'll meet God. Repent and believe the gospel. That's all I can say, friends. That's not very Christian. Well, I'm talking to you. I'm talking, talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And I say, stop, stop swearing at me. You're stop right. swearing. So like I was saying, friends, lie. testimony of God, the word of God, if you can believe. You see what I mean? See how they prove God right? Every time they come out shouting and hollering against God and against the testimony of God. You see it proof in the heart, the enmity against God. The hostility against God, cursing and swearing, the vilest of language pouring out of his unbelieving, godless, atheistic heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you know what's in his heart, you see? So friends, if you can't believe, everything is possible. Oh yeah, that was the challenge. I was talking about, bring me some, bring me a bunch of atheists, you know, who will stand here and testify in public that atheism has made them happy, given them hope for the future, even beyond death, you know, that has blessed their life. Well, I, I defy you to do such, but I'll bring you a bunch of Christians who will stand here and testify of how God has blessed them with eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ, forgiven their sins and given them the hope of eternal life. We got the testimony of Christians, but you ain't got, without God, without Jesus, you ain't got no testimony. You ain't got nothing. Or you might have riches. You might have, you know, you might have your, your apple pads and your you know, all your technology, you might all, you might have all your, your clever humanness, you might have health, wealth, and prosperity, but I tell you, without Jesus, you ain't got nothing. You got nothing. And all them things that you got, they're transient, they're passing away just like the world, and so will you, just as I told the lady. I tell you, friends. You're going to cock your toes up. You're going to go out this world feet first like everybody else. Naked you came into the world. Naked you'll go out of the world. You take nothing with you. You never saw a hearse following a Pickford's van. Sorry, wrong way around. <laughs> you, you never saw a Pickford's van following a hearse because you don't take the stuff with you, friend. You don't take nothing with you, just your sin, into the presence of a holy God who will dispose of you according to what you have done or not done with the Son, Jesus Christ. Because this is the condemnation, says God, that you have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Friends, we are here to testify of these things. We are to tell you of how we're just sinners ourselves here amongst a bunch of other sinners to tell you how you can be forgiven and how you can go to heaven, how you can know eternal life in the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you can, says Jesus, all things, everything is possible, even your salvation. Everything is possible to the one who believes. But without faith, friends, without faith in Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Believe on him and you will be saved. Grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone justifies a man, a sinner, the worst of sinners and the best of sinners. Whoever you be, whatever you be, however dirty and dark and dangerous your sins might be no sin deeper than the grace of God in Jesus Christ. So I call upon you to believe. Call upon you to come to Jesus. Kneel before Him now as your Savior and your Lord rather than later on as your lawgiver 
and judge. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do it now, friends. Do it now while you have the breath of life in you. Jesus Christ is Lord. He alone conquered sin and death and hell, overcame, and friends, is alive and alive forevermore. And that, friends, to intercede to mediate for sinners, that you might draw near to God through him, since, since he lives alive from the dead, and eternal life in his name is offered to you this afternoon. If you would but come, if you would but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you would be saved. So, friends, repent and believe the gospel. Those are the first recorded words of Jesus in the New Testament. Repent and believe the gospel, Lester. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. That's why you'd like a copy of God's Word, entire New Testament, offered to you in its fullness. Yours take and do with as you will. You'd like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious souls. 